Dr. D Flow. Hey, Dr. D Flow here, and today we are going to build the driver board for the J design. The driver board connects directly to the LEDs, and each board can power up to 128 LEDs. Noticeable features of the driver board are its DC DC converter and its ability to revert the differential signaling from the controller board back to the original data for the LEDs. Let's quickly look at the schematic. Open the HW Rev2 folder, then dual driver, and open the PDF of the schematic. Like the previous video, we will use this schematic to help us place the components. Head back to my website, drdflow.com forward slash jdesign to purchase these parts. Each driver board will set you back $30. You will most likely be purchasing four in order to get the full use out of your controller board. First, we are going to buy the surface mount components from Mouser. You will have to order this project for as many boards as you plan to build. My 1000 LEDs required eight boards or eight Mouser projects. The Mouser part list contains all of the components except the inductor and screw terminals. We will purchase the inductor from Coilcraft. Again, I needed 8 of these. The screw terminals I bought from Digikey. These are 0.1 inch pitch in order to fit the PCB design. You will need 2 terminals per board. These are helpful for quick connecting and disconnecting of LEDs, however, they are not required. Next we will order the PCBs from OSH Park. Your controller boards might be in the shopping cart as well. Finally, we will purchase the stencil, add the project, and log in. The 3 mil thickness is fine for this board as well. A stencil is definitely recommended for the driver board because some of the resistors for this build are tiny. Once all of your components arrive, it's time to prepare the driver board PCB for the components with solder paste. Secure the PCB in the acrylic jig, line up the stencil, apply a generous amount of paste to the back of a card, spread the paste at a 45 degree angle and remove the excess at a 90 degree angle. It will save time if you apply solder paste to all of your driver boards before moving to the next step. It's time to place the parts. This will be identical to the previous video. You choose a component you want to place, say R4. Check the schematic for which part that corresponds to. In this case, R4 is a 3.32 kilo ohm resistor. Then I search the mouser part list for the mouser number associated with this component, or I look at the description on the bags. Then I place this component. On the schematic, R1 says 178 kilo ohms, but you will notice there is no 178 kilo ohm resistor on the mouser part list. Instead, there is a 215 kilo ohm resistor. I talked with Julio about this, and he said either resistor value would work. This next component is a little tricky to place because it is a resistor with four pads. There are two ways this resistor can be placed, and either will work. If you are wondering why this resistor has four pads, it is because it is a current sensing resistor. I have uploaded documentation on my website if you want to know more. Try and place R3 so that it is centered about these pads, and you should be fine. When the solder paste reflows, it will create the necessary separation between the pads. I will play some music while I place the next couple of non-directional components. See you soon.
Now it's time to place some polar components. We will start with the green diode. Just as the controller board, you want the arrow on the back of the LED pointing to the negative sign on the board. Or you want the green polarity markings on the front of the LED to be next to the negative sign on the PCB. U1 is a switching controller which plays a role in the DC to DC conversion that happens on the driver board. This component is polar, so it's important to match the dot on the top left of the component with the dot on the PCB. This dot is also very hard to see, so you might need a magnifying glass and it might just be a dent and not actually ink. Next we have D3 and D4 which are the same TVS diodes as those from the controller board. These are three pronged, so there's only one way to place them. Next we're going to place Q1. Q1 is a MOSFET and it's the same drill. Dot on the part matches dot on the PCB. U2 converts the differential signaling from the controller board back into the data for the LEDs. Again, dot, part, dot, PCB. Our components are starting to get bigger so they're easier to place. Now we're going to put down D1 which is the same diode from the controller board. The white band on one side of this component is the cathode band and it is going to be placed next to the C on the PCB. Next we're going to place the first out of the two large organic capacitors. These are polar and they're like squares except for two of the sides are slanted and these will line up with the ink screen on the PCB. C1 is even larger. Follow the same protocol for placing this capacitor. D2 is a shot key rectifier and I will put more documentation of what that means on my website if you're interested. The last component for the driver board and I cannot tell you how satisfying it was to place this coilcraft inductor with my hands and not using my tweezers. We will now reflow the solder paste in order to form a nice electrical connection between the components and the PCB. Again I just put it on my stove but a toaster oven would be more ideal. Fortunately, you only have to hand solder one component, and that is the connection for the Ethernet cable. Alright, I lied. You also have to hand solder the screw terminals for the LEDs. And that's the driver board. In the next video, we're gonna put everything together and do some coding. Subscribe for more DIY projects.